Siate i benvenuti. Welcome, my friends, to Star Sector. All right, in case you never got a chance to see this game before, Star Sector is an indie top-down RPG about space, exploration and fleet combat. Uh, in this you are a spaceship captain, but you also can hire additional characters, uh, which also level up, by the way, and you can assign them to other ships in your fleet. And there's tons of different ships, each with unique uh, ab abilities and they're all customizable uh, in terms of hull mods, weapon loadouts, all that good stuff. Later in the game, if you want, you can go looking for habitable planets and even establish your own colonies. And at that point, you start competing with the other factions in the game uh, to the point of like you can get to dominating, I don't know, like the fuel market or the luxury goods market, etc. This this game is essentially a, a sandbox. Uh, the fleet combat part is a, is a big part of the game, but you could like decide to run your own business as a merchant. You go around buying low and selling high, or for example, you can hang around the borders between two factions at war and just scavenge on the battlefield uh, while remaining neutral to the conflict. Now, the, um, there isn't a ton of lore, like for the history, the, at least that I know of, but the gist of it is that centuries ago, uh, the human domain uh, built these massive gates to travel impossible distances. And this sector of solar systems uh, is basically a colonized portion of space that is very far, supposedly, from Earth. Uh, and at some, at some point, a calamity uh, caused all these gates to deactivate. And so the sector got cut off uh, from the rest of the domain. The colonies that were uh, that essentially remain trapped in the sector, eventually reorganize themselves uh, in the factions that we can see now in the present. We will play, uh, at least at the beginning, as a bounty hunter, and we will be affiliated to the hegemony, uh, which is more or less what remained of the domain uh, military after the, uh, the collapse. Uh, being affiliated means that we will also partake in their wars. So the factions that are enemies of the hegemony will see us as a part of the hegemony. And so we will have to pay attention to, to that also. And anyway, enough chatting. Let us begin by creating a new game. You can generate your names and pick a random uh, portrait like that. However, I tried recording this or already and I came up with a combination that I really like and I want to pick that again. And this has nothing to do with the fact that I already have the thumbnails uh, for the videos with the name on them. No, nothing of the sort, absolutely. So we will play, play as Zero Thompson, which is a, a randomly generated name, by the way. Let's continue. Gained 2000 credits. Your most recent occupation was as a bounty hunter commanding a wolf class frigate. There are also other options and there are options that get you uh, farther ahead like giving you bigger ships for example you can start with an apogee class cruiser which is a really good ships however let's start small acquired wolf class frigate in addition your fleet includes we get to choice between 
a kite class shuttle under the command of an experienced subordinate or a shepherd class drone tender with a cargo of heavy machinery. I will choose the second because I want to get to the uh, officer hiring part uh, later on. So let's choose two. Acquired shepherd class drone tender and gained 20 heavy machinery. Select the campaign difficulty level. I will go for normal. Start with the tutorial. The tutorial is fairly well put together and also I hope it will help me refrain from trying to offload all my knowledge about the game all at once before <laughs> starting really to play. So I will just follow the tutorial and try my best to shut up and let the game speak for, it for itself. Welcome to the sector. Your fleet is in the middle of nowhere and critically low on supplies. If you don't acquire more supplies, your fleet will suffer through a slow but ultimately fatal decline. Supplies is food, basically. Uh, if you run out of food, you slowly die. Continue. Fortunately, there's a debris field nearby. Move up, move up into it and activate your scavenge ability to search it for useful cargo. It's possible to scavenge through the same debris field multiple times, but there are diminishing returns and increased risk with each attempt. Only scavenge once here. We gain the ability scavenge. Make sure to take all of the supplies and any other valuable cargo, but feel free to leave the cheap and bulky metals behind. To get your fleet moving, click on empty space in the direction you want to move. You can both click and your fleet will start moving. With the mouse wheel you can zoom uh, in and out. Now in this view you don't really get to see your ships. This is the travel uh, interface so to speak. You, you can also click and hold and the fleet will continuously uh, follow your cursor which is what I find most convenient. Unless you want to position yourself in a really precise spot. Now, when you are in a debris field, the scavenger ability, which is one of your basic abilities, by the way, which the tutorial is enabling uh, one at a time. Um, so the scavenger ability gets en enabled, it is available now, not now, so we can either click or hit the number six. Your fleet assumes a stable orbit relative to the debris field. The field appears stable and will not drift apart anytime soon. Long-range scans indicate it's likely something of value could be found inside. There are indications of some easy pickings to be had, and the risk of an accident during a salvage operation is low. These parts can change depending on where you are, how recent the debris is, and there are also both stable debris fields which are more or less static but you can but you can get everything out of eventually and then there are the um, unstable and also like temporary debris uh, fields which are mainly the one that results from uh, big fleet warfare and destroy the ships so we can proceed by assessing this debris field these stats show what you would need to properly scavenge everything. We would need 80 crew, but we only have 46. You would need 30 heavy machinery, but we only have 20, resulting in a 22% effectiveness. But this time, the results are pretty much rigged. You are guaranteed to get, I don't know if this exact number, but at least uh, a small amount of supplies, but we also get fuel, heavy machinery, and metals. Metals are just good to sell, basically. Can take all and continue. The tutorial wants us to press F5 to quick save and continue with the tutorial. 
Alright, game saved. A pirate fleet is approaching. First, you'll spot it as a sensor contact, then as an un unidentified fleet, and then when it gets very close, you'll see its true colors. Continue. Don't worry. The pirate ship is a shoddy rust bucket, and if you do lose, you can press F9 to quick load. Even so, combat can be expensive, especially if there's no bounty on the enemy you fight. Deploying ships into battle reduces their combat readiness, and recovering combat readiness consumes the supplies. Battle damage can cost even more supplies to repair. So basically, of course you need supplies to repair, but even just preparing a ship for battle costs a certain number of supplies. Well, it costs CR, this, this combat readiness uh, stat gets diminished, and to regain CR you need supplies. And CR is basically your effectiveness in combat, so you want to stay uh, at high CR as much as possible. However, fighting is often necessary to survive. Wait for the pirate fleet to approach, then defeat them. Where are they? Okay, we got a sensor contact. When they get near, we can see... I can pause. And we can see there's basically only one ship in this fleet. It's still uh, an unknown, un un unidentified fleet. When it gets nearer, then we get a better sensor contact and we can see that it is a rogue miner. That counts as a hostile and uh, its intention is intercepting our fleet. So now I will stop moving so that we can get intercepted. The pirate ship maneuvers to prevent you from disengaging easily. It does not appear to be certain of your identity. Any hostilities will have a reduced impact on your reputation. This blurb is the normal stuff that uh, comes out when, uh, when, you in when you intercept a pirate for the first time. But yeah, you, you have to do this, this combat anyway. So we, we can try and open a com link. They usually have some phrases to say. Did the hegemony send you to this er errand for them? Come to collect a bill? Maybe. Continue, we move in to engage. The opposing fleet moves in to join battle. We got a chance now to transfer a command, so like we ourselves as pilot, we can now swap from the, the Wolf class frigate, which is our main ship for now, and the drone tender. I will stay in the in the frigate. Continue. You can select which ships to deploy at the beginning of each battle, and deploy reinforcements as the battle goes on. Deploying a ship reduces its combat readiness by a fixed amount. In addition, ships will begin to gradually lose combat readiness after their peak readiness time runs out. Recovering combat readiness takes time and consumes valuable supplies. Alright, we get to choose which ships to actually deploy on the battlefield at first. I will uh, probably only need the, the wolf for, for this. And you can see that the projected deployment recovery cost is 5 units of supplies, which for now I believe this to be um, corresponding to the fixed uh, CR cost of deploying the wolf. If I select also the drone tender, you see that it goes to 8. Oh, and it, it's this number here. I'm stupid. <laughs> this 5 and this 3 uh, are the uh, CR costs. I'm sorry, the, the CR costs... Uh, how do you say that? Uh, converted to supplies units. So, we choose the, the wolf. You can see my, um, my, my portrait there, indicating that it will be me commanding this. And we deploy. 
in combat you have a tactical map this is the tactical map uh, from this you can give order to the entire fleet and then you can leave this and get to the actual uh, battlefield which right now is showing um, in in transparency behind um, since we have only one ship right now there's no point in us issuing any order because we will pilot manually I stopped the uh, combat right away I, I paused I should say because I want to switch now if you look at this portion here you can see a bunch of information about the ship I will not get to get into too much details but I want to use the number keys to switch to controlling my swarmer SRM launcher which is basically missiles and I want to uh, toggle the auto fire no need no need the pulse both the pulse laser and the uh, point defense lasers and ion cannon are in auto fire it means that they will fire towards my current target as soon as I am in range but I want to control the missiles uh, manually because as you see here I only got six missiles in each in each launcher and the weapons are also visible on the ship model this here are the launchers so I will zoom out and resume another interesting thing about the wolf is that it has its own unique ability as it says in here the ability is a phase skimmer and I have three uses of that and it's currently ready phase skimmer means that I get to, to do this this very short jumps and it will slowly recover uh, the, the uses all right I can uh, hover the enemy and press R to uh, lock as a, as, as a target and now I will try to get in range and start shooting I'm also activating shields with the right my mouse button anyway this blue arc is my frontal shield as I, as I move around I'm trying to angle my my ship with the basically uh, the ship tries to face the cursor while I pilot with W A S and D keys. Quick note: um, you can see here where I'm at with the uh, hull integrity. You get an indication of my current combat readiness, which is 70%. And flux. I think we will get a chance to get an explanation about flux later on. For now, let's just uh, note that I don't want the flux to get to the end of the bar. Oops, I had I had my my shields lowered. And the enemy is destroyed. That explosion that you just saw when the when the ship is de defeated, that does damage too and it depends on uh, the, the amount of damage depends on how big the ship is. Your forces were able to gain a complete victory in the last engagement. Relationship with the pirates reduced by 3, currently at minus 68. So we, we already started at, at minus 65 relationship with pirates, which makes sense. Salvage crews are able to recover 268 credits from CPU cores still active in the wreckage. 
Now this amount of credits that you get from the CPU cores, salvage or whatever is peanuts, is really not much. I don't even know why this feature is in the game. Uh, because usually you want to fight pirates that have a, a, a bounty and that is usually a lot more than, than this. But we can pick through the wreckage and we get to scavenge. Sometimes you also get to uh, recover entire ship hulls. Take everything. When picking up stuff, we also want to make sure we don't go over our storage our cargo capacity or well there, there, there wasn't personal to, to be had but we also have a maximum personal capacity and we have a fuel capacity if you go over you start consuming more supplies so for example if you if you are carrying a lot of supplies and you go over cargo capacity you will consume them faster until you get back in the green so to speak but if you have more fuel than you need, and you are not consuming the fuel, you will burn through your supplies very fast. Confirm and continue, we gain 3000 experience. Oops, I skipped that message too fast. I think that was the message saying that some of our ships are low in combat readiness, which is something that I can show you by accessing the fleet screen. As you can see, we deployed the ISS Wrath, the Wolf class frigate, and out of a 70% max CR that we can have on ships right now, uh, the current is 60%. So it will take some time and the uh, consumption of supplies. The yellow number is the amount of supplies that we consume per day. So the drone tender, which is a really small ship and it's at um, max repair, that, that doesn't need repairs. And at max CR for our skills, only consumes uh, 0.1 supplies per day. But the wolf, which is in need of armor repairs and needs to regain a 10% combat readiness uh, will consume 2.7 supplies units per day. Okay, we need to quick save to progress. You've gained a level. Normally you gain one character point with each level up, but you get an additional three points at the start of your campaign. Continue. You can spend character points to increase apti aptitudes and skills. Each aptitude governs a set of skills, and the maximum level of a skill is limited by the level of the governing aptitude. The maximum level you can reach is 50. Once character points are spent, they cannot be refunded. Press C to open the character tab and consider your options. You don't have to actually spend the points now if you don't want to. So I press C and this is the character tab. I'm level two and I have four character points. The rows correspond to the four aptitudes, combat, leadership, technology and industry. And each of these has a number of different skills. If you don't get at least a point of aptitude, you cannot unlock the uh, corresponding skills and you need to max out the aptitude before you can max out any single skill. And the uh, total level, the total character level can, that you can get without mods if it is 50. One thing to be said about skills is that some of them only affect your own ship. For example, if I look at hel Helsmanship, you can see uh, in the description, uh, well, not in the description, but in the stats, it says that, that at level 1 increases my acceleration by 50%. It says plus 50 acceleration piloted ship. Instead, if I look at this navigation, level 1 says minus 30% terrain movement penalty from all applicable terrain, fleet. When it says fleet, it means the entire fleet when you move 
in fleet mode. And if you look at level 2, where it says minus 25% fuel consumption, all ships in fleet, when it says all ships, it means that it applies singularly to all ships. So every ship has a fuel consumption when you get out of a solar, sy solar system. Fuel is basically only used to travel between stars. Um, level 2 would give us a reduction of 25% on fuel consumption, which is pretty great and that is why I usually start with um, raising the technology aptitude and the navigation skill. So we get that 25% fuel consumption reduction right out of the gate and also if you look at level 3 it gets you uh, plus 1 maximum burn level, we will get that later and an extra ability called transverse jump which opens up more option when it comes to how to jump in and out of solar systems. So let's confirm this selection for now. So we leveled up and we hit... Okay, tab brings me to the star system map, ask brings me back to the game. Shortly after dispatching the pirates, you receive a tight beam communication from the system's main inhabited world, Ansira. The message is brief and asks you to travel there and contact Station Commander Beach as soon as possible. The names of the Station Commanders are also randomly generated, I think. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not a native English, English speaker, so be patient. I know I'll be mispronouncing this a lot. Let's lay in a course for Ansira. You don't need to do this to travel, but it helps keep track of where you're going and, uh, and how long it'll take to get there. After dismissing this dialogue, press E to open the Intel screen to view the details of the message you've just received. Select the message and click on Show on Map button to open the map centered directly on Ansira. Then left click and hold on the planet and select Lay in Course from the menu that pops up. Alternatively, you can just right click on Ansira. You could also press Tab to open the map and locate Ansira manually. Once you get to Ansira, open the COM directory to contact Station Commander Beach. So, for example, Tab brings me to the system, um, the system map. We are here, and Ansira is this planet here. Another way to do it, as the tutorial said, oh, the repairs have, have completed, were completed. Also, when you're not in pause, um, when the game is not paused, uh, time passes, absolutely, and you consume your supplies. E gets us the Intel screen where we can have a map of the entire sector and also the list of available uh, events and mission. Now this is our mission for now, it's called Stabilize, Stabilize the Jump Points. It says the same thing that we read just a second ago. But we can click now on Show on Map, so it sho shows us where we need to go. We can hold left button and select lay in course or we could just right click anywhere to lay in a course. Let's say we wanna dock, dock with a space station around planet Ansira. And you press A to get there. No, not really. I don't... Oh, of course. The game is paused. <laughs> Your ships don't move when the game is paused. That's an important bit of information right there. Can we please go there? Okay. 
Now I think it, it, it locked the destination. Ansira is pretty far away, and it'll take a while to get there at this rate, of course. The Sustain Burn ability is useful for long distance travel. Activating it will briefly stop the fleet and reduce its ac acceleration to a minimum, but the maximum burn level will be much higher. A sustained burn can be interrupted by other fleets activating an interdiction pulse. So this sustained burn is basically the uh, in-system travel mode. You get your uh, speed, I think, more or less doubled, but it takes a while to, to get to that speed and when you are uh, in sustained burn, you can get uh, like stopped if somebody uses this interdiction pulse. Activate sustained burn to get on Sierra more quickly. You can also press and hold shift to speed up time. Shift is time compression, so the speed of your fleet is still the same, it's just that the games run faster. So, if you look at this portion of the screen, it says our current burn level is 8. Now that I activate pressing 5 the sustained burn, we stop for a second, but now our maximum burn is 18. So we are much faster. Now we can also compress time to get there faster, but we get another message. Your fleet is getting closer to Ansira, which is controlled by the Hegemony, a major militaristic faction in the sector. While in hegemony space, a fleet is required by law to identify itself by keeping its transponder turned on. This is a view shared by most, though not all, major factions. Turning on the transponder makes your fleet highly visible, and everyone seeing it will know who you are. Unlike that pirate fleet you fought earlier, which you had to be very close to positively identify. Keeping your transponder on is a crippling disadvantage in hostile space, but as we're getting closer to a port and we'd like to dock there, it's a good idea to turn it on. We gain the ability transponder. Activate the transponder before getting close to Ansira, both to avoid unwanted attention for, from patrols and to receive docking clearance. Since turning it on and off has major consequences, it requires a double tap to turn on or off, once to prime and once more to confirm. So we absolutely want to turn on our transponder right now, because we are in hegemony space. I just double tapped the number one key. Now I just wanted to show you the time compression when I hold shift.